I went into his room and I kneeled by him and I spoke to him, knowing that it would be my last time speaking with him. In that conversation I had with him, I promised him that I would be a movie star. And I promised him that he, that I will do the work for him and with him by my side. The next day my mom called me. She was like, we lost him, um, he's gone. Then I booked Moonlight a month later. What's going on? We got Jarrell Jerome in the house. Y'all make some noise. What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, you back You back in L.A.? Yeah, I'm back in L.A. <laughs> I'm back for good. Yeah. For as, I mean, not as, for good. As good. long as you can be. I can't be here for too long. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what you been up to, man, since you, you've been back, right? Because you were on the East Coast now. Strikes ended, like... How's, how's that impacting your day to day? <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie, I'm blessed to say I got to jump right back into the project that I had got shut down because of the strike. So I'm back at it in full right now, terrifyingly so. <laughs> uh, is working. it a relief or is it like it kind of comes with its own? It's both. I mean, half of it's definitely a relief. I'm like, uh, it felt almost like a COVID part two for us, you know, Ooh. where um, like, gosh, you know, not that serious, obviously, but in terms of, just not being able to do anything and outside yeah. resources stopping you and, and having a plan in motion and it just completely stopping um, dead in its tracks. So the relief is there in terms of, hell yeah, I'm back and I get to work and be on set and do what I love. But then the other half is the pressure is insane right now. It's <laughs> immense. Um, I'll tell you guys, cause uh, the strike is done so we could talk some shit. <laughs> we could talk a little bit, uh, but I'm working on a, a project right now called Unstoppable. Um, and it's a true story, a beautiful true story about um, a wrestler named Anthony Robles. And he was born with one leg um, and he chose to wrestle for his life. And he became undefeated throughout his entire college career. And he won the NCAA championships in 2011. And this man is just a triumphant story of, of resilience, perseverance. Doesn't matter how I am, how I came into this world, I'm going to accomplish what I want to in my terms. You know, he chose one of the hardest sports in the world. No yeah. teammates, nobody on his side. Mm -hmm just him um so i'm doing that and i'm playing him and uh i remember i was saying this to this, somebody the other day he was like what are you playing his best friend or something i was like, I was like no son i'm playing him, I'm playing playing him. <laughs> um but it's a really uh it's a big production it's the biggest production i've been on so far because mm. it's helmed by ben affleck and matt damon's company mm. um and the cast is crazy uh j-lo's playing my mom <laughs> so shouts out uh don cheeto's in it michael pena's in it Jeez. um so I'm surrounded by just greats and, and people who have been in the industry for a long time. That being said, mm. the pressure the is pressure. crazy. Yeah. Uh, and another thing about this project is I've been working on it since before COVID. I've been working on it since, tw I got the part in 2019, right after the Emmys. Yeah. This was like, this was supposed <laughs> to be my thing after, yeah. you know? Uh, and I started training for it. I met Anthony, I flew to Arizona where he lives. I stayed with him for two, three weeks. Uh, this was 20, top of 2020, mm -hmm. and we were gonna shoot in May. March happened, everything, shut, everything down. shut down. Two years go by, I get a call. They're like, hey, remember that one movie you were doing before COVID? Yeah, uh, it's back. Do you, like, do you still wanna do it? I said, absolutely, absolutely. because for me, it, was, it became more than me. I met Anthony, you know, I, mm -hmm. I spent time with him. I, I was learning him and he was learning me, you know, and um, we bonded. And so it became a thing where I was, I don't care how the movie's made, I love to make it for him and with him. Um, and I didn't want anybody else to do it. I'm not going to the movie theater to see that movie and be like, <laughs> yeah, that was like, supposed that to been, be me. Yeah. And then like, you're critiquing it the whole time. I'm like, I'd have done that a little different. <laughs> no, nah, let me stop. Uh, but yeah, I, of course I wanted to be a part of it. And so I'm still a part of it. Um, and at the top of this year, I went back into the training, back into wrestling, because I have to learn how to wrestle and Yeah, so all of what that. is that like? So you, you right, because you got to go through real training, and I'm sure you're working with Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, yeah. Daniel Lopez. Like, they're very, like, focused. So and, you feel and like you want to be that way as well. Absolutely. So how detailed are you? you I'm trying training? to do it all. I'm trying to do it all. I mean, when it comes to the characters that I play, I, I really try to build the whole world as much as possible, just so it's easier when action comes, you know? Not having to make things up on the spot, like really being solid on who this person is. Um, so, Anthony walks on crutches. 
he, he decided to not have a, a mechanical leg or a wooden leg or anything when he was a young boy. He said, I just want a crutch. And wow. so this man could probably beat us, all, beat us all in a race right now on crutches. Like he's so fast, he flies upstairs in crutches. He goes downstairs in crutches. He stands up with them. It's always sitting right next to him. It's a big part of who he is. So I agree to myself that I gotta be on them crutches and I have to learn how to crutch around. So for sure, sore up in the armpits for days mm -hmm. and like learning things that you don't think you have to learn. Like, what's it like to be on crutches? We sprain our legs, we gotta be on crutches for mm -hmm. what, two, three weeks? Yep. We hate it, it's like, all right, done with those. But to actually pretend that they are my crutch, my actual support, and so, um, I could beat you guys all in a race now on crutches. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and the wrestling. So because he has one leg, he wrestled on the ground. Um, uh, so he's down here, like almost like a snake wrestling. Mm. So as opposed to me learning how to wrestle like the average wrestler up on my feet, I learned from him. I'm spending all the time with him. He's so involved in it. And uh, so he's actually teaching me things that he did. And not only that, he's teaching me things he thought about in his matches. And mm. I think that's gonna be more important. Yeah, because you're actually getting the insights behind why he was doing it. Why what he, he was, was doing, doing it, what his choices were, what his what that energy was. Like, this is the kindest guy you'll ever meet. I tell him he's too nice. I'm like, you are so nice, somebody's gonna walk all over you one day. Stop it. And he's just like, nah, man, this is me. <laughs> I was wrong. Cause when that man gets on the mat, <laughs> it's a different, it's, it's a different it's, situation. That's where all that's where that's where it is. The <laughs> anger, the 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 um, the aggression, yeah. and he needs that for that sport. And yeah. so, um, trying to figure out what that what that balance is, being so happy and light during the day, but then when you get to the match, letting all of the world and the frustration and, and your doubt and your the, the judgments placed onto you out on the mat, uh, it's really cool. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I was just in the gym today. I'm gonna be in the gym tomorrow. I'm gonna be in the gym the next day. And so it's cool to be back, but um, again, the pressure. We shoot December 12th, we come back. So I've got about three and a half weeks to uh, get back to where my mind was yeah. and back to 11% um, body fat. <laughs> Gotta get there somehow. <laughs> so, start with this water here. <laughs> start with it. <laughs> well, we definitely are looking forward to that. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, some things that have, have been out and that we, we, can, we can actually talk about. But yeah, yeah. Tell us about, um, I guess, like, what was it like being Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, Guys, you were the, actually Spider-Man. <laughs> I swear, the coolest thing about me being Spider-Man is that it took me about three days to be Spider-Man in terms of in terms of the work required on my mm. part for that film. Mm. Uh, it's a Marvel is Marvel, so you don't know nothing, even when you're a part of it. Like I, you don't have the scripts, you don't know what the story is. So I went in three times for three recording sessions across three years. Like mm. my first one was some point during COVID. Yeah. Then my second one was 2021. My last one was at some point last year. <laughs> I don't remember what day. I don't remember when, how, why, but I showed up to this recording studio excited because I just know I'm, uh, at the time I thought I was a very small part. At the time, I didn't know I was gonna be the, the big plot twist mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. Spoiler. Yeah, seen it. Said, yeah, seen but it. I still didn't say anything. There's a plot <laughs> twist at the end and I'm a part of it. And uh, when I was doing it again, I, ha I those three different sessions, I had said the same six lines. So nothing changed in the script. Nothing was different. I just re came and repeated myself. Yeah. Right. And so on the last one, I was like, hey, guys, like, what's this? Like, what, what am I doing? What am I what's, doing? <laughs> what's going on? I, you, you called me last year, yeah. you called me the year before. And then that last one, when I was finding like, can I get a little more insight? Mm -hmm. They did the whole, all right, come in, come in, come in. Yeah. This is what's going on. And when they said it to me, I was floored. I was, I was amazed. I was just like, yeah, they were like, we want you involved in the next one. Mm. We think that we have this big plan for a big surprise and it's going to take the story somewhere. So, uh, when it came out and I started seeing my name thrown up mm -hmm. everywhere and everybody's like, yo, Jarrell, this is dope, this is dope. I'm sitting here like, thank like, you. Uh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it was gonna be cool, <laughs> you know? Um, and I went to see it and it was the coolest, it was the coolest shit ever. It was, it's just so cool. Um, what they're doing in general, what that world yeah. is doing, what that franchise is doing for people of color, for for Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, and I'm Dominican from New York, so it, just to be part of it feels mm. so special for me. Mm. Um, what do you think it means to folks from where you're from, from the Bronx or from, you know, from the neighborhood? Uh, I, I, maybe the same thing they felt when they watched the first movie, the one I wasn't in. They, you know, they 
sat there just like, I don't, I don't know who made this. I don't know how this was made, but finally it was made for me, mm -hmm. you know? So I think uh, in part two, me actually showing up and being Dominican, being from the Bronx, because, you know, if you're Dominican from the Bronx, you'll tell, you'll tell somebody twice a day that you're Dominican from the Bronx, <laughs> at least. And so you know a Dominican from the Bronx when you see one. And they were so, they were so loud when the first movie came out. They're like, that sound, that, that went by me, that little bad, right? And so doing all that. And so for me to actually be in it, uh, the energy's twice as much, you know, yeah. that. So it's so cool, and I'm excited for the next one. Man, well, I mean, we excited for the next one, too. Yeah. And, uh, if y'all hadn't watched it, I'm not going to be the one that spoils it for you. So I can't even spoil the next one for you. Like I said, I don't have the scripts or nothing. I just know. <laughs> it's See, gonna, I couldn't it's do it if happen. I wanted to. Yeah, that's going to happen. That's all I know. How how hard is it to 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 keep a, a secret like that for so long? Because you, you've been working on, you said, since 2020. Like, yeah. how is that for you to be like, I can't say anything about this? Uh, I'm good at keeping secrets. <laughs> yeah, I'm just good at keeping secrets. I actually have so many secrets. I actually have like a lot of exciting news uh, that's upcoming. Yeah. that I just keep inside. I don't know. I don't know. You like the element of surprise. Yeah, I love the element of surprise. It. I love that. I also, I'm big on like the whole jinx thing. You know, don't jinx mm. it. Like, keep it tucked until yeah. it, it turns into fruition, you know? Yeah. Uh, the more you talk mm. and then nothing happens, the more that kind of comes off as, as who you are or kind of how you move. And so for me, um, there's a like, where are you? You're so quiet. What are you doing? But then when the work comes out, the answer is there, yeah. you know, the, the answer yeah. of what I've been doing, what I've been up to is there as opposed to me so just blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah. Right. I also really suck with social media. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. I know I'm trying. I'm This year, I'm really trying. I got a whole social media person on my side. <laughs> you can't her like, what do I do next? You know, <laughs> and she's like coaching me because I, I think that's such a serious part of the game. Like, mm. no matter how cool I want to be and be like, nah, no Instagram, nah, no TikTok. It's, it's so important, it's you know, it's important in this day and age. And I think today's artists can't only be talented. You got to be smart in terms of brand and, and, and how you talk to the world. Yeah. Uh, God. <laughs> what does it feel like to you, right? If it, does it feel like an, uh, an additional job? hundred percent. It feels like the only job. <laughs> everything else doesn't feel like a job. Everything else feels like my passion. That feels I, like work. Yeah, Social it media. feels like Got what it. I actually want to do. Social media feels like the work part. It feels like running a website, you know. Yeah, um, yeah cause I just wish I didn't have to say a damn word. Like I just wish you, the work could talk. Yeah, and, do the work and, and, it, and it can for, for artists yeah. who have established themselves, I think after a long time, like Kendrick, right? You know. Mm -hmm. The work talks. We don't have to hear a single word from him until the next song comes out. Um, and I respect that so much. And yeah. clearly he's that type of person who wanted that life from the jump. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to not be so mm. in people's faces. Yeah. He wanted to be known for his art, not for his being famous. Mm -hmm. And if you watch the way he moved, he was always like that. Very select interviews, very select press. And then it was always just putting all that time into the music. And so I'm very inspired by that track, but he even came from a different time. Like shocking yeah. enough, 2011 is still a much different time than 2023. Yes. So it gets worse and worse. I feel, I, I feel bad. I feel bad for homie in 10 years who's who is, you know, our age and has yeah, to try has to come to up in this world. Like, good luck. He's good luck. 12 years old right now, somewhere fine, chilling, not on social media, but he don't have to be. He or she. Yeah. So yeah, man. It is what it is. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you um about uh, you know, a relationship that you you've spoken a lot about, and it's that relationship uh, with your grandpa. Mm -hmm. Um and you know you you spoken how that has impacted your life and your career so much. Yeah. Um, what can you share about that relationship? Oh boy, turn into therapy on the couch real quick. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, no, I, I grew up in a house of ten people. So I grew up with my mom, my dad, my sister, my two cousins, my titi, my uncle, and my grandparents. So it was like a yeah. three generations in one house. Yeah. You know, um, all sharing three bedrooms, yeah. four bedroom, uh, three. I don't remember, but not enough bedrooms um and so i grew up in a very tight-knit family which is probably a big reason why i'm not so good with uh social media or just social in general because growing up i didn't have a lot of friends at all all my friends were in school that was the limit to uh i never had a sleepover growing up um strict parents you know what i'm saying yeah, they wanted, uh, to, you know, they wanted like, to know where you was my, at my mom's dominican my dad's <laughs> haitian so like it was just very very uh caribbean strict teaching know where i'm at also from a very tough area so yeah. for them it, it it wasn't about control it was just about safety mm -hmm. uh so 
uh, never had sleepovers, never went to those parties in high school or anything mm -hmm. like that. So even uh, the day I graduated, um, everybody had like their party to go to yeah. and I just went to dinner with the fam, like all mm -hmm. of us. And yeah. that was fine, I was fine with that. Yeah. You know, some kids were, you know, I don't know who wasn't okay with that, but I was so okay with that. Yeah, you were like um, totally fine. Exactly. You didn't feel like you were missing out. Exactly, and that's all to say my grandfather was the, um, what's the word? He was the leader of us all, mm. you know? He was the, he kept us all together. Um, he loved, like he, he had two daughters, which was my mom and my aunt. Like I said, we all go in the same house, so he only had daughters. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen, and his wife, and I've seen, and he was with my grandmother since he was 16 wow. and she was 13 in the DR and so he just taught me love he yeah. taught me unconditional love he taught me how to love and support your family he taught me that family always will come first yeah. um and because I lived in the same house as him for so many years yeah. uh I, I viewed him as uh you know of course I had my father, but I viewed him also as my father. I view everything he said was real. Everything he said I believed in, you know? He could have said anything. He, he could have said, go do crack. And I would have been like, if crack is the way, papa, if crack is the way, then it's the way, you know? He never did, he never did. But like, he, he was one of those guys who I just, um, I looked up to him so much. My middle name is his name. Mm. My middle name is Adolfo. It's a very, very Spanish name, very Dominican name. Um, that's his first name. And so all his, uh, the comedy, the charm, the wit, all came from him. Mm. Um, he was diagnosed with cancer when I was uh, 16 mm. and I lost him at 17. Mm. And um, it was, it's, it's still to this day my biggest loss. And at the time, my biggest loss, yeah. I had lost uh, like, a, like a, a, a distant friend, yeah. you know, but I hadn't ever, really felt like a piece of me of, uh, suddenly vanished. Um, and it's so insane because I took care of him with my mom the last summer before I went to college. So I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. On the day of my graduation, I did the dinner with my family and yeah. he missed it because he was in the hospital. So we went after as a family to go see him in the hospital so mm -hmm. we could celebrate my graduation. Yeah. Through that summer, he got better, but because it was gonna get really bad. I don't know, like, like I don't know if it happens to everybody, but when you're super sick, there's this random week where you're good and you walk around and you talk again and you're drinking water and mm. doing all these things and kind of gets everybody around excited. Yeah, because um, you can get hopeful. And... But then I think something about all the energy spent in that week yeah. kind of uh, crumbles. And so he, he ended up um, <clears throat> not getting better and I was leaving to college on August 23rd and he was in bed rest and he couldn't speak. He could only listen and hear and move his hand when he uh, heard something. Good knowledge. And so uh, I went into his room and I kneeled by him and I spoke to him for about an hour, knowing that it would be my last time speaking with him. Um, because I was going to go off to school and his condition, it wasn't realistic that he was going to make it to um, Thanksgiving when I would come back. <clears throat> so in that conversation I had with him, I promised him that I would be a movie star. And I promised him that he would see me on TV from like heaven. And I promised him that he, that I will do the work for him and with him by my side. And he squeezed my hand. Wow. Um, and then that was uh, August 23rd. He passed away August 25th. Um, I got to college. The tw I got to college the 24th. The next day, my mom called me, um, and it was my sister's birthday, August 25th. So I thought she was gonna call me, like, call your sister. Yeah. And I picked up, chill, and uh, he, she was like, we lost him. Um, he's gone. Uh, and then I booked Moonlight a month later. You booked Moonlight a month later. On October 25th. Which wow. is two months to the day that he died. Wow. You know? Yeah. God, man, what you doing? <laughs> oh, man. I'm supposed to be in a chill interview. Um, <laughs> cool, calm, collected it. <laughs> um, yeah, so something about that made me feel like when I told him I was going to be a movie star, I don't know what people believe in. I'm religious. I'm, I, I believe in God. I believe in heaven and all that without getting into it. Uh, in my world, in my brain, how I see it is that he went up and started pulling strings right away mm. and started... Um, 
puppeteering me mm -hmm. right away. He had that power on earth. Everybody he met wanted to see him more, wanted to, wanted to know what this man was him. about, you yeah. know? And so I think he went up there and like did the same thing in heaven, was like, mm. excuse me, I'm here now. Yeah. Well, yeah, where's the big man? Where's the big man? I got some requests. And so, <laughs> where's um, the big, I got yeah, you know? And so I think, I th it just, I like to think that that's what happened. And yeah. since then I've held him very close to me, my entire family. Um, you know, every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every time we all get together, we speak on him speak and on. we, um, yeah, he's just super hmm. important. So that's, that was, that's my story about my grandfather. How do you, um, how do you think about him when you think about Moonlight now, right? Because that connection just feels very strong and um, the amount of time and like, and also the, the work that you poured into that, it gives us a lot of context, I feel, mm -hmm. to like even how you showed up in that film. Um, what does that mean to you? What do you hope it means to him? Um, you know, acting is scary because it really is tapping into your emotions and tapping into the stuff that really hurts. And so obviously when he passed, like I'm a freshman in college, yeah. you know, I yeah. went right back to school after his funeral and people were throwing parties and getting to know each other. And so I had to join in on that as mm -hmm. best as I could while, while feeling so much hurt and yeah. pain and confusion and like, I just wanted to be back in the Bronx. Like I didn't want to be in school anymore. And so um, then I get a call saying you booked this movie and you're gonna fly to Miami randomly next week. Um, and I just took all, yeah, I took it to the set. I took it to the set. And the cool thing about the character I played in Moonlight, I don't know if any of you guys saw Moonlight, but you know, Kevin, the character is so all over the place. This man is so confusing. You know what I'm saying? He, he's one way, then he's the other. He's a facade, he's a mask. He's always pretending yeah. around everybody. And so I just used that energy, that uh, hiding what's really going on energy to play him. Yeah. Um, and it worked, you know, it worked, yeah. Did I, it help you like, you know, work through your own like emotions yeah, always. behind the scenes? Yeah, always. Uh, when they see us did. Yeah. Two years, three years two later, years later, two yeah. years later. Yeah, yeah that. <laughs> I cried enough. Yeah, I definitely let um, a lot out for f for that. But you know, you can't ask to get projects like when they see us or Moonlight. You don't know when that moment of playing a character is gonna affect you or change you. Yeah. You don't know when you're gonna go to set and really let out things you never thought you'd let out. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely grateful for having those opportunities right, right in there. the beginning, in the in a time of uh, like you know healing from all of that and and just the time of being like, yo, my life is changing really drastically, really fast really right now. Really fast. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. For a lot of young actors, you know, they're, and especially like when they're starting really young, you know, there's a lot to be said about um, consistency and relevance and, and being able to stay in the pocket. Mm -hmm. um, for you, like, you've consistently been able to go to these different projects and continue to grow. As, as an actor, um, how have you managed to kind of stay so so relevant and, and present in your work? Like, what are you doing, I guess? Thanks for saying that, because <laughs> I appreciate that. Sometimes I have a lot of doubts um, on the other side, so I appreciate that. Um, I think just being so selective has mm. helped me. Um, Do you say no a lot? I say no all the time. Okay. I, I've said no more times than yes to the point where now I'm like, I should have didn't just say yes more because like I want to be out there a bit more than I am now. <laughs> but I've always cared about longevity. I've always cared about being like 50 years old and looking at my IMDb page and going through the credits being like, ka, 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 <laughs> hit, hit after hit after hit, yeah. you know, as opposed to it being like 90, 100 projects. And it was just You're kind like, of whatever yeah. for the, I don't know where my mentality came from. I don't know why I, I thought that way or still think that way. Um, it might just come from like the first movie I ever did won an Oscar. Shit. I ain't even do a commercial. <laughs> I ain't do a short film. I just went right off of my college campus, shot it for 12 days, flew back. They said it won an Oscar, you know? I was like, whoa, what the heck? Yeah. Two years later, I, do, I just do two projects in between when they see us, two projects. Then I get when they see us and it takes me to the Emmys yeah. and I win an Emmy. So now I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Everything needs to relax. Everything needs to, to just take a chill pill. And so that's where I realized, well, if I've been so blessed and, and lucky in the first, what, four years of my career, mm -hmm. what do the next four look like, you right. know? And, and for me, that was so important to keep that, um, 
just to keep that, what, what, what do you call it? Like uh, that gravitas that's oh, happening. Yeah. Like yeah. accidental gravitas, guys, okay? I wasn't <laughs> like, yeah, I'm about it. to be the, but I want to keep it and yeah. I want to make it make sense for me. I also want to challenge myself. Of course. You know, once you've been challenged once, I think this goes for anything you do. Once you've been challenged once, you know, you get that feeling like, ah, mm -hmm. do it again. You know, mm -hmm. challenge me again, because you, you, you completed it, right? You accomplished one challenge, you it's want more another fulfilling, one. It's right? like the, like the gym, it, yeah, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Nobody likes the gym, but then if you go to the gym for a week and you feel some change, you're going the next week like, just because go. challenge accepted. I want to keep it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, so you were saying about you know because you kind of share like with those projects, right? Like they have led to like you know this recognition. Mm. Does that add to the pressure of the next project, or are you able to figure out how you can kind of separate it and not kind of bring that into it? Adds to the pressure in terms of um, selecting or... In or how you feel you need to show up. Oh, 100% adds to it. Yeah, I'm killing myself, man. <laughs> I'm driving myself crazy. Uh, I, uh, like even doing Virgo, mm -hmm. that was so intense for me and scary for me because I knew that I made this, this selection that was right for me. I knew that I waited long enough because check this out, guys. I said no. I won't mention projects. Like, yes. that's messed up. Yeah, yeah. But I said no to some <laughs> projects, right, that are like not as chat like just i'll go to set and you might as well just tattoo i did it for the money on my forehead you know what i said <laughs> like clearly it was just for that for that uh and i said no to two projects that were offering me like solid money yeah he's like it's, it's back yeah i'm saying no my team's like let's think about this one more time like one more time yeah. um but i just knew it it just wasn't going to propel me mm. as an artist as an actor as a yeah. human and so i said no when i said no to those two things that's when Virgo came through. Had I said yes to them, I wouldn't have done it. You wouldn't have been available. I wouldn't and I have think been the, available. The thing that's dope about Virgo is you were also a producer. On yes, that. I got to do the whole thing. Yeah. I got to make it my whole hmm. world. On top of that, just do something so different and out the box that hasn't done, been done before. So I, I knew that regardless of where the show went, because that's another thing about being spoiled twice so early, <laughs> you want all your shows to just blow up. Yeah, you want everything and to be you the want same. everything to be the same, but that's not the case, and that <laughs> no. won't always be the case. So I knew in my head, well, regardless if that's the case or not, I'm doing something so different, yeah. so challenging. Shooting that was so, in, like, insane. I didn't even... Um, I didn't look at any of my scene partners in the eyes for any of the shoot because it was all, I don't know if you guys seen Virgo. I'm a Virgo is on Amazon. I'm playing a 13 foot tall character. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and everyone else is not 13 feet tall. So it was all forced perspective shooting mm -hmm. and it was all um, dolls. They made a 13 foot silicone doll version of me. So that was on set, yeah. two of them big motherfuckers. Just, <laughs> just like giant just 13 foot. Huge. <laughs> and then um, little tiny dolls of the mm. other actors. So if we were all in a scene together, they would make little tiny replicas of you guys. You guys would be sitting in little mini chairs. Well, your replicas, your little dolls would be sitting in mini chairs and the camera would be behind. You'd just see all these little heads in these little chairs. And I would stay my regular five, seven size and look like I'm 13 feet just cause of the, you of know, the, the trick and the yeah. replicas. Or we do a thing <clears throat> where um, I was up on a platform and the other actor was just down there, but the way I was looking was like towards the floor over there, and she was looking up at the ceiling at a green mark. And on action, we're doing the whole scene, and I'm just doing it like this, but I'm, it's as if I'm looking at her mm -hmm. in her eyes, just from the way the perspective looked. So, hell yeah, challenge accepted. Hey, challenge accepted. Challenge, <laughs> challenge accepted, like let's go. And I felt like I was boxing. It felt like yeah. more than just acting. Now I have to act, but also keep in mind where my eye line is, also keep yeah. in mind what my size is, how much bigger I am, yeah. how much, I have to move um, characteristics and the movement and stuff. Yeah. So that's all to say, like uh, being selective, man, has helped me a lot Hope kind you. of maintain this, like, all right, this guy's good, <laughs> you know? Um, and a lot of my favorite actors right now are doing the same thing. Daniel mm. Kaluuya is by far one of my favorite mm -hmm. actors. I'm, I want to work with him so bad. Hey, Watch speak the, on it. the camera. <laughs> what up, Daniel? How you doing? <laughs> speak on it. And so... Uh, I think he's very selective with his work, too. Mm -hmm. We haven't been seeing him as I mean, often. You have to be, right? If you want to be able to clear the space to, to do meaningful work, right? It, it, like, like you said, you wouldn't be able to have done Virgo. So right. It, it, right. you do have to. And some stuff you're like, man, I wish I could have done that. But some stuff, you know, everything's not, not meant for you yeah. in that regard. But exactly. how was it balancing, like, producer, actor, and also collaborating with Boots Riley? <laughs> So it was just one of those pinch me moments and one of those things where I am grateful f for being so selective because it, it got me there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the executive producer thing, 
My publicist hates when I say this, but I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do a lot of executive producing. <laughs> like not just not compared to the executive producers on board who really do producing as a job. But I was, I was, um, I was along for the rise as the jump. So Boots came to me first before he even came to any streaming service. So before Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, before any of that, he got to, he called me, he emailed me actually. <laughs> and the email said, 13 foot tall black man, <laughs> just like that's an incredible mm, subject the best. line you know it's the guy who did sorry to bother you and you're just like alright this makes sense for what it is and so I took the meeting with him two three days later <clears throat> he came to my hotel and we sat at the restaurant and this man this man came in like a top hat his sideburns fully grown on the side but don't connect to the, to the front right here and a briefcase and a suit right so I'm like man when you hear about Boots Riley, you, you, you expect this, but when you see it in person, your jaw drops. You're yeah. just like, this is real. This is a thing. Boots is, this this is, is Boots, Boots Riley. Is. Yeah. Uh, inside the briefcase were little figurines of, of my character and the other characters hmm. and a little car. And he, for the next 30 minutes with the figurines, showed me how he was going to shoot for his perspective oh. and how he was going to use no CGI, no special effects. Well, Few special effects. We always needed the special effects, but no major yeah. special effects and no major CGI. And I will actually just, no stilts, no tall ladders. Mm -hmm. No, just me on the ground. And he showed me just with his, <laughs> with his fingers <laughs> being the camera. And I'm just sitting there stunned. I'm amazed because mm -hmm. not only is the story so creative, but he was willing to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. Like he was willing to not skip anything. You know, yeah. if you come up with, CGI is just easy. It's money, but it's so easy, mm. and you can make me look huge, mm -hmm. and realistically, it, it'll work yeah. in a way. But he was like, no, not, not real enough. Mm. It has to be as real as could be. And so when he told me about that, I was so sold on it. Yeah. Um, and I was completely on board. And because I was on board from that moment, he was down for me to, to be producer because I sat on all the pitch calls. Mm. So when they talk to Netflix and HBO, I'm like quiet in the back, like, oh, this is interesting. This is what they be talking about. Like really pitching a show to a yeah. major company was really cool to learn. Mm. Um, and then casting, I got to be a part of the casting, you know? Yeah. Uh, when I was younger, I would go into the room and there'd be somebody sitting on the chair and I'd be reading with them. I was that somebody on the yeah, chair. Somebody. And so <laughs> I, felt, I felt cool, you know? No good to be on the like, other yeah, side. come on in, come on in. <laughs> Leave your stuff right there. What's your name? You know, I felt I, I just the power and the and the the respect yeah. given to me was such an honor, mm. and I felt I felt uh, older than I was. You know, much older than I was, and it's cool to feel that. You know, would you do that again? Do you see like that being a part of like your career trajectory where you want to executive produce things as well as you know be the actor in? Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, I want to write and direct. I wow. definitely do. Not to. Later. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm you're not to, in a rush. Yeah, I'm trying to Clint Eastwood the game, you know? <laughs> like, really do a nice, solid acting career yeah. for at least 60 years of your life, and then all of a sudden become one of the greatest directors for the last 40 years of your life. So, I love it, man. You're yeah. speaking into existence yeah, right now. Yeah, trying to. Does your approach change between, like, say, uh, preparing for a drama like When They See Us versus, um, I guess we, we could kind of call Virgo a comedy, but mm -hmm. I'm a Virgo. Like, what shifts in your approach, or is it the same? I don't know. Not much, yeah. yeah. Not much. I'm, my approach has been very, like, uh, I call it half method acting. Okay. Because I'm not fully method acting. I, I'm scared of that. I don't do all, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not fond of getting so lost in what I'm doing. I think <laughs> I love Jarrell here too, you know, and I protect him at all costs. Yep. Um, but I like to half method in terms of I do as much research as I can possible. Mm -hmm. And I put myself in the situation as much as I can possible. That feels right to me. So for example, for when they see us, you know, I didn't go commit a crime, get arrested so I could see what it's like to be in jail. But while we were on the set, <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> while we were on the set of when lunchtime came, I asked to stay in the cell during lunch, little things like that. So spending an hour, away from everybody inside the cell with it closed, not locked, but it closed. You feel me? You feel me? I want, it was, nobody's allowed. You're gonna leave, you like, hey. I need to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, no. So I stayed, I would just stay in there and just fill it out, fill yeah. it out and, and understand that obviously it's not real, but this is as real as it 
it's going to get. It's, it's, yeah. it's going to get for me. Um, that the, the hour I stood uh, in that self, I felt like I was taking two hour lunch breaks, three hour lunch breaks. An mm -hmm. hour that went by felt like maybe three, four. Yeah. So when I feel that, I think about, well, what does 12 years feel like? Mm -hmm. Must feel like at least 40. Mm -hmm. And so what does it feel like to just want something to be done? You know, yeah. that, that just weighing on you every day. It's like you wake up in a new day and you know for a fact that nothing's changed, but you just want it to change so badly. Yeah. And so something as simple as that helped me a lot for the role. In your career, you've already worked with like really amazing <laughs> directors, directors, black directors, yeah. Barry Jenkins, Ada DuVernay, mm -hmm. you know, Bruce Riley. Um, <laughs> is that, I, I imagine that's not lost on you, right? Like, no, definitely it's, not. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy to just even think about that. What do you learn from them, you know, when you're working with them? What do you feel like you've learned from each of them? Professionalism. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just the top of the top tier professionalism. Yeah. And that comes with, that's an umbrella of things, you know, professionalism comes with like leadership. Yep. It comes with um, understanding the vision that you have and being able to execute, so execution. Um, they're all very different directors, that's the best yeah. part. Like they all do very different work, they all speak differently, they all believe in different things. So the way I, I, I got to learn, it was almost like hmm. something new from each one, yeah. you know? Um, Barry Jenkins is very, cool guy, free, you know, like, hey man, you come with what you, like, <laughs> come with what you got and I'll nurture it with you, mm. you know? Ava, Ava is the captain of the army, you know? Ava is militant. Ava is like, well, go do the work at home and when you come, here, come here, let it be ready mm. and then we'll work it together because it's ready, yeah. you know? Boots, <laughs> Boots is 60 ideas in a minute, <laughs> you know? Boots is, I did a take and he's like, okay, how about this, 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 that, 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 and that. Try it. You know? <laughs> and and that is um <clears throat> that's another part of learning. Yeah. That's okay. It's a I gotta not be so ready, right. not be so rehearsed, not be so because be of the, the way. Is asking yeah. you to be. There was times, guys, I was mid-take, boots is next to me. St it's hard to explain. The, okay, the camera's right here, right? Shooting me this way. Boots is standing right here, looking like at me <laughs> with an iPad in his hand because he's watching the footage. And he's just like this and looking back at me. If I was right here, this is him. <laughs> <laughs> and at one of the takes, I have to be like, okay, I'm sorry, can we cut? Boots, can you just go that way? <laughs> like a little bit? And he's like, yeah, 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 sorry. You know? So, like, it's, it's all, they're all different energy and different ways to work, but they, they're they all come out with such incredible, incredible yeah, product, you know? Product. Yeah. Um, so we spent some time talking, talking about the acting side, but you know, you also have this whole other uh, passion that we're all becoming, you know, familiar with, which is, is on the music side. Mm -hmm. um, what, when did you start really getting into how you wanted to share music with the world and how you were going to start to craft it as an artist? Um, yeah, so I do music as well <laughs> surprise um the music thing is insane because it's been my whole life mm. i never never didn't do music when i shot when they see us i went to the studio <laughs> after set all the time um same thing for virgo it doesn't matter what project i was in in what state uh, i would go on instagram and look up uh produce uh, studios yeah. and the tags and i would just look into one of the pages and i would dm them like hey you guys have availability and it'd be like i'm talking middle of nowhere boston like middle <laughs> of nowhere framingham massachusetts yeah. and like this one studio is a thing and so that was the kind of hustle i had I, i've been doing music since i was 11. Um, we're not doing music. I don't know what he does music at 11, but I was like You've been interested in, in love with music, like, rapping, yeah, yeah, just in love with hip hop and the idea of poetry. I did slam poetry um, when I was in high school. Um, I love, I love artistic writing, vague writing, really like, you know, but I also love rap music and I love music in general. So all that being said, it was around when I was 18 and I did Moonlight where I realized that I had to make a choice on the music in my opinion, because all of a sudden, I'm in an Oscar-winning movie, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, what's next for the acting? All of mm -hmm. a sudden, I, these doors are opening. So while the doors open on that end, there's this burning passion inside of me, yeah. like asking me, hey, like, what's what you gonna do with me? Like, what's, <laughs> what's going on? And so for me, it was, well, do I keep it as a hobby, just rap to friends and mm -hmm. keep it on some chill, or do I pursue it? Mm -hmm. When I was 18, 19, I got into that headspace of like, all right, I'm in the studio all the time. But 
while I'm in the studio all the time, making at this point 150, 200 songs, Jeez. I'm still moving with immense amount of doubt in it. Hmm. And so the passion is so strong, but for some reason the doubt is as big. Do you um, know, what's the source of it? Where is it coming from? The acting side. Hmm. Because it's, you've been successful there. Yeah, yeah. You know what's also funny? Like, I don't even, no, I'm not even gonna say this. Yes, I'm gonna say that. I'm just gonna be honest. I never thought I'd be a rapper. Like, growing up, I loved rap so much, and I, I rapped everywhere. I was always at the lunch tables rapping. I was in high school. I had a girlfriend in high school. I wrote her a little mixtape, a whole situation, you know, Casanova stuff. Like, I was really all about the poetry and the rap and the music. But for me, it was about going to college. That was it. I didn't even know I was going to act. I knew I liked acting a lot, yeah. but I didn't. Bro. Come on, like I was doing it, but with the whole come on energy, you know, like I love what I do and I'm gonna keep doing it, but come on, like yeah. how many people do it? How many people from where I'm from do it? So I always had to keep a plan B in my head, always. And plan B for me was finish school and like come back and I don't know, run a bodega or something, you know? <laughs> run a bodega. Like, like, I don't even know. Like that was, that was, I was cool with just being home by the family, making money for the family and with the family. Um, so that being said, when the acting thing came to fruition and it was a real thing, the rap thing naturally just came with it because mm. I, because that was, that was art for me as well. Yeah. That was my outlet as well. And so the doubt comes from, I haven't even figured it out. Mm. I don't even know where the doubt comes from. Yeah. The doubt just comes from having been given what seems like the world mm. in one part of my passion, and then the other passion, I'm at rock bottom. I'm at square one. Hmm. Not rock bottom, rock bottom is negative. I'm at square one. I'm you're, at the, yeah, I'm at the, like, the It's beat. a different, you're in two different places. So yeah. when I talk to you at CultureCon, yeah. my legs were shaking, dog, because I was so scared, and my, my boys were like, bro, you do this all the time. You've done countless interviews, you've done countless stuff. I'm like, yeah, but I'm talking about acting. Hmm. I'm talking about the movies and stuff that I worked on with a hundred other people. I'm not talking about the song that I wrote myself from my own brain and my own thoughts. Mm. And so, um, I'm gonna let you know now though, the doubt isn't stopping me. Yeah, mm. yeah. And it's okay to be aware that there is doubt mm -hmm. and still move mm. with it. Cause I think, what I used to think is because there's doubt, there's no point. <laughs> like, there's yeah, so, like, why do it? there's so much doubt, I'm just gonna keep doubting it while I do it. Mm. But it's like, no, I'm in the studio now knowing I'm doubting myself and still working through that. And honestly, there's some songs coming out of it that are tight. <laughs> coming from this resilient, I, I'm going to do this. Gonna do yeah. I'm going to be this person. And so um, between the ages of 18 and 25, I'm 26 now, all right? Getting up there. I'm getting up there. <laughs> the eye rolls I just got. Yeah, you got so many. <laughs> uh, oh, the reach. Oh. <laughs> See, I did it during the laugh, so it distracted y'all. Now it's going to hey, be it. <laughs> uh, uh, Between the ages of uh, 18 and 25, I have just made maybe over 400 songs and dropped none of them. Wow. Dropped nothing. Wow. Dropped nothing. I dropped, actually, I dropped two. Two songs. Um, and a lot more now. <laughs> and a lot more, now I'm more here. Now I'm not going to stop because like I said, the doubt could live there all at once. I'm not going to let it slow me down anymore. For, mm. From 19 to 25, I don't think I was even, it's so funny, like, I don't know if anybody has had the age yet where they feel like suddenly such a switch happened in their mentality. <laughs> uh, for me, it was going into 26. <laughs> like 26, the second I turned 26, I said that I would never stop myself from doing something <laughs> that I know I want to do. Was there something that happened? Uh, other than the age change? Or was it just like it had been festering for so I long? I think that's so it. I that think it just like, built up. and it's, Either I'm going to do it or I'm not. It just took a new year of life for me, you know? So 25, it was when I made the decision to roll it out. Yeah. But 26, I'm making the decision to never stop rolling it out, <laughs> you know, and, and not hold back at all, regardless of the comments I'm getting, regardless of the confusion or the slow build. Just keep moving and moving and moving and see what it does for me. Because honestly, that's all we really can do. And anybody we love and are inspired by did the same thing. They just kept saying yes, mm. and they just kept ignoring their doubts. I doubt there's any artist that we love that never had any doubt. And Every, if you're, you know, you're putting something out, you're gonna, it's gonna inspire some sort of emotion. 
right? And I yeah. think so many of us creatives, yeah. you know, we go through the thing of doubt or we go through the thing of imposter syndrome or we go through these different things. But like to your point, like even though those things exist, you still have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. Right. And the decision is either we're going to do something with it or we're not. <laughs> Give it up. Exactly. And the not is never appealing to me. Like I, I just, I really love the idea of my future self so much. And I do things today for that person. Yeah. And so I'm just going with it, man. Yeah. And so that, that being said, from 18 to 25, I had 400 songs where I'm like, all right, should I drop 400 songs on these <laughs> Right, wow. just mess around, see what happens. I'm finna get, one of them gonna be a hit, right? <laughs> one of the 400. Uh, so, you know, I, when I was, while I was shooting Virgo, it happened for me. Yeah. Um, I was shooting Virgo, I realized that I was gonna, cont like I'm doing another project that is gonna add on to the acting side. Mm -hmm. The more I add on to the acting side, the more I will fear the music side. Hmm. Because I don't want to go through the process of, you know what I'm saying, switching the mindset up. Yeah. And, and like, you know, once people are latched onto one idea, it's hard it's to hard bring in another. To, without at least making it look like I'm trying to get more money or yeah. trying to get more fame or yeah. trying to like revive this career. You know, it's, it's none of that. Yeah. So I don't want it to seem like none of that. So for mm. me, when I was doing Virgo, I'm like, yo, if Virgo comes out and none of these songs are out, I'm even more of an actor in everybody's head, even mm. less of a rapper, mm. you know? And, and if I come with the songs, people are gonna be like, hey, but weren't you that tall guy and that guy from <laughs> that one, you know? It's, yeah. I, I wanna catch it early. I have a great fan base now and I'm so grateful for every single fan, but I don't even think that's half of the fans. Mm that I'm gonna get, hopefully, huh. you feel me? And that's that's the energy I wanna carry. And so that being said, it's doing it for the people who don't know me now. Yeah, I mean, that's gotta be a fun, you know? I know it can be, it can have fear, but it can 100%. also be exciting at the same time, adrenaline to be able to even be in that perspective, even have the opportunity to do that. One thing I wanted to ask you, cause you spoke a little bit earlier about, you made this, um, mm. you know, the, the, the romantic EP. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think you're a bit of a romantic because on Love Pack, you got a couple of different love songs on there. And, you know, maybe you might say love songs, different type of vibe, whatever. But um, <laughs> I guess like what when you, you reflect on it, you know. <laughs> what do you want to say to me? <laughs> um, what is it with you and, and the love songs? <laughs> um, I, am, I am a hopeless romantic, for sure. I... Guys, I'm Dominican, one, <laughs> two, I'm from New York, and three, I'm a Libra. So just add Shout that out to up, the mix, that in, mix that in a pot, <laughs> mix that in a pot, you know what I'm saying? And you're gonna get, you're gonna get something. And so for me, um, love has been a big part of my life since I was young. Um, yeah. I've been in a few relationships that have honestly shaped me as a person, where I've learned so much about who I am and how I want to present myself and how I want to speak to women. Um, I'm at a point right now where it's very tricky and it's the hardest it's ever been in my life because I'm dealing with trust issues. I'm dealing with um, who's here for me and not the name or the, the whatever that comes with it. Um, and then I'm also dealing with, I don't know what's next in my life. Hmm. Like, I don't know what the chapter 27 is. Yeah. I don't even know what chapter 26 is. Yeah, and so <laughs> it's still being written. <laughs> it's, imp it's impossible to make a promise to someone when you, you can't even promise yourself anything. Mm -hmm. And so, but then the worst part is, I want to make a promise to somebody. <laughs> like, you know, I'm a lover. I want it. <laughs> I'm a lover. Like, yeah. uh, I'm not big on the whole messing around with multiple women in one week or one like I, I'm big on if I like it I kick it mm -hmm. and I kick it until it turns into what it ends up being you know whether it was like we ended up being homies because this was some like this was more than attraction mm -hmm. or we end up hating the shit out of each other because <laughs> we didn't see eye to eye on where I feel like I'm at and where she feels like she's at or something like that so um the love pack was my favorite pack for sure. <laughs> uh, as a rapper, I love all music. I love all hip hop, you know, so all the different packs are different forms of hip hop that I love. Yeah. But the amount of love I got on this love pack and the attention I got on this love pack, it just kind of makes sense. Cause I think y'all can all tell I'm a little hopeless romantic or a lover boy without even <laughs> like listening to me. So it definitely, I think, I think it just made sense with who I am. Um, 
but yeah, a lot of the new music that I'm gonna have coming out is definitely tapping into the the quarrels I'm having in my love life, <laughs> for sure. Um, when I was growing up, a lot of my music was about me being from poverty mm. and me being from the Bronx, yeah. me being Dominican and things like that. Uh, and I still I could still tap into that and Absolutely. write that, but you know, the most authentic music is gonna come from what's happening in your life right, right, now. right now. And so for me right now, the biggest thing I'm dealing with and the biggest stress in my life right now, to be honest with y'all, <laughs> is women. It's the love life. <laughs> so so uh, it's just coming out naturally in the music and I was very excited for Love Pack to come out. I'm very happy it was received well yeah. um, because there's definitely gonna be a lot more of that, more of that sad coming. boy shit coming out for sure. <laughs> Uh, the same way I think you you have um, your selectiveness when it comes to your, your projects as an actor and the folks that you want to work with. When you think of your career as, as a musician and as a rapper, who are some of these folks that you, you know, as you think about future projects that you would want to work with, whether it's on the production side or whether it's, you know, featured artists, like, who comes to mind? Um, I mean, I've obviously got, like, the, excuse me, sorry, the big names in my head, you know, Timbo. Hey. Pharrell, yeah. Um, like that's that's obvious. I could, it's a long list of producers who are just doing great work. But for me, as uh, on the musician side, at this point, anybody. Mm. That's my answer right now. Um, I'm so early on that yeah. I just want to learn. Mm. You know, I want to be a fly on the wall in, in different sessions. So all the songs. So I'm dropping 16 songs. I've already dropped 12, and there's four left coming out. Um, all those 16 songs, I wrote. 2020, 21, 22, none of them this year. Hmm. Um, like I said, I've been doing like just so many songs. So I've been finally like dropping the old stuff and mm -hmm. all the new stuff I'm excited about because it's just me more grown, more confident, yeah. you know? Like somebody was like, yo, this, this, this your dropping is hot. I'm like, okay, well, wait till you see what's next. <laughs> yeah, because you feel like you're like, I'm getting hot. better. I'm this, growing. Right, I'm <laughs> growing. And, you know, people don't, they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, like, uh, I'm dropping visuals with the songs. People think that the strike happened and I went straight to shooting the visuals, mm -hmm. straight to recording these songs and letting them out. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. like, no, no. These, been... this is thing, these are things <laughs> that have been, right? This is all to say all the music that I've done, even the new stuff I've got coming out, I've only done it by myself and with three other guys. Wow. Just the local guys I've known for four years now who I trust. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring us four into different into rooms different now. Rooms. Yeah. So you want your team to come exactly. With you. So you're, the question is, you know, who would you want to work with? Man, as long as I get a call from somebody who's hearing it, respecting it, and makes music, I'm down to pull up. Because that's that. the thing about music, man. Like it's music is music. You know, you yeah, don't have man, to be Kanye West no, to make great no. music. You yeah. know, um, it's all you can make something so beautiful with the person living next door you don't even know. And so yeah. for me, it's as long as I get those calls and those are the calls I definitely want to get mm. more than anything, more than billboard, stream, hit, none of that. I yeah. just want a certain respect from people who have known me as an actor. Uh, like I, I, people follow me. I mean, Cardi B follows me. Rihanna follows me. Yeah, let's talk. Go look at my Instagram. <laughs> Go look at my Instagram right now. There's like so many just people I'm so inspired by. So I just want to catch their eye one day. Yeah. I just want to catch their attention. And even if it's just a slick text, it, yeah, this yeah. sounds great. All I need, That's and then you... I move from there. I'm like, this sounds great. So what you trying to do about it? <laughs> what you want to do about it? You know? So. Y'all heard it here first. We're going to get a re-re and, 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 <laughs> yeah, and Cardi B feature. And Cardi B. On one track. Watch, watch me pull. Watch me pull. <laughs> oh, man. This has been a great conversation, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, you just man. opening up and sharing so much. We're going to take some questions from the audience if that's cool. Oh, too. yeah. Okay, cool. All uh -oh. right. Uh, audience, we're going to come to y'all. Let me get a mic. And we're going to start right here on the front row. Uh, my name is Gabe. Uh, I'm Sorry from the Bay. Gabe. Yeah, hey, man. It is what it is. Yeah. What's going on past the cracker dawn? <laughs> uh, um, when it came to the the release of the current songs that you currently uh, put out, you said yeah you have four hundred songs that in the vault. So somebody leaked them; they could sell it as an NFT. You feel me? Yeah. They, they make some bread off of that. That's messed um, up. I know. <laughs> what are you What are you planning on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if somebody, uh, uh, no I, comment. I never thought about that game. <laughs> Ooh. I, I, uh, Y'all get gave contact. Right. I want to know. <laughs> right. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, um, when it came to deciding the release of these tracks, yeah. how did you finally choose these are the ones? 
mm. that I'm going to release despite them to you feeling old. Yeah. Did you do like a like an audience test, like studio session where you brought people into like a listening party or like, yo, what what was your reaction to this track? And was it all relatively the same? Or did yeah. you find something interesting that popped up to you that you didn't even expect when during these listening sessions? That's exactly what I did, bro. I, I got two of my homies from New York who I mm-hmm. I trust so much. I mean, these are dudes, I send them my song, they be like, eh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> E-H as a response, you know? <laughs> like, like, all right, shoot me. Like, yeah, what are you yeah, talking yeah, about? Like, I like really? this one, I like this one, you know? So I trust them and, and yeah, I, I did a session where I listened to not all 100, uh, not all 400, but 150 probably, about six, seven hours. And we just like, yeah, we're kicking back, smoking a little bit and just playing through songs. And I did that specifically because I had gone through what I knew I liked. Cause even though I did have songs where I was like, eh, there's still songs that, all the songs I have now, I love. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't feel like I cheaped out on. I cared about. I put the time into it. So it's not like I'm dropping stuff where I'm like, oh, I know that's bad. Like I, I know I cared so much when I was doing it, and so I trusted myself to just throw out what still felt closest to me. You know, when you like when you go to the studio seven days a week and you decide to try to make a new song every day, each song is gonna come from something different, new energy. You might even make a song that you're like, why would I even say that? Like, why would I even go that direction with it? Because I don't feel that way. Um, so any of those songs, I would be like, eh. Then when I played it for my friends, there's a couple where they stood up, you know, like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, this is hard. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, really? <laughs> hey, this one's good? All right, cool. All right, let me just write it down. They, you know, this one, this one. Um, then I'll play one where I, you know, I really love. They'll be like, I, I like it, I like it. Then I'll, exp- um, I remember my boy was like, what does it mean to you though? Like, what is this, what does yeah. the song mean to you? And I told them, they were like, drop it. <laughs> they said, I right, dropped that one. And so, uh, after, P- after that session, I had about maybe like 36, 37 songs. <laughs> that I, I personally that liked, like. my friends personally liked. Yep. We all thought it was valid, we all thought it was cool. And then from there it was like, yeah, uh, disowning children. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, I love you, yeah. but you gotta go. But you, you gotta know? go. You gotta go. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> like, people disown children often. <laughs> like, they're like, everybody's like, is that relatable? He's like, wait. Uh, <laughs> I was like, people be doing that? <laughs> hey, man, stop thinking about my heck? experience. Right. <laughs> He's like, no, don't bring that up. <laughs> don't bring that up. Uh, uh, and then from there, I, I got to about 20 songs, and then I was thinking an album or two mm-hmm. albums. But then I was thinking, album though? Like, it's not, you know, album culture is interesting these days. It's very mm-hmm. streaming, everybody likes quick stuff. And then who am I to do a whole flash song and dance? Like, please listen to my whole album. You know, I didn't want that whole try hard thing to come off too yeah. much. So it was like, all right, maybe not an album. Maybe I take it back to 08, 09 and drop mm-hmm. packs, mm-hmm. drop mixtapes, drop little things. And um, that idea felt right to me. And so I got lucky where even though depending on the session, I'm in a different headspace or I'm talking about a different thing, mm-hmm. it's still me, you know? So I got lucky to see that, oh, look at these, these are love songs. Yeah. Like I got like four love songs, Yeah. love pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just barring up over instrumentals. Like I'm, I, there's, the hook is not so serious. I really just wanted the word playing rap, yeah. rap pack, Yo. that. Then I, you know, there's songs where I'm so scared to drop because I went so left field with it. Mm-hmm. I'm doing, I'm a big fan of Tame Impala and yeah. Kevin Parker and that whole, yeah. that whole world and synths and all that. So mm-hmm. I was like, I did a song called Zombie. It's on my trip pack um, where I'm singing on the hook in a falsetto and it's just live drums and synths behind me. And then I rap in the verses. And I remember, you know, when I played that song, I said, cool, I'll never drop this song. (laughs) That's fine. Like, I'm glad I can do this though. And I'm glad I know I can test myself like this. But then I saw I had like three other songs like that where I'm like, I don't want to drop these, but Mm. I'm not going to lie. It sounds like I did something cool, you know? (laughs) And it sounds like I'm not, I'm trying to be an artist. You know, I want to be not just this backpack rapper or or, or whatever you might, um, might have thought after the rap pack. Right. And so I put that on into trip pack, you know, as if you were tripping shrooms or something like that. That's what the music feels like. Yeah. Um, not that I know anything about tripping shrooms. 
<laughs> and then Trap Pack is me just like rapping and taking myself less serious over yeah. hard beats because I love that music too. I love yeah. all, you know, it's interesting being a 2023 rap baby because of all the artists you got to have been inspired by before. Yeah. Yes, sir. Gabe, appreciate your question. Thanks, man. Um, who we got next? Going right here. All right. Um, my name is Cheyenne. Um, what's up? I just wanted to give you like a little bit of flowers because I am a fan of yours. I think you're so strong in like everything that you're in. Um, but I wanted to ask you because you said you were like 18 when you shot Moonlight, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you're 26 now. Mm -hmm. um, have you watched that movie again recently? And like, what does that mean to you today? Because it's such like a culturally like yeah. impactful movie. So I have not. I um, actually don't watch my work. I don't. I, mm. I I only watch myself at the premiere. Yeah. And I'm barely watching. <laughs> like I'm like <laughs> I'm like that. And you know when you hear your own voice and yeah. you're like, the hell is who the <laughs> fuck is this? That's how I feel with the with the acting. You know, it's especially the more vulnerable I get in front of the camera, the less I I want to see. I I don't know. Just preserving. You know, I don't need to see exactly what I look like when I'm completely devastated in the press. I just know that I can reach it and and kind of give it off and move forward. Um, so I haven't, but you kind of just put me on. I think I'm gonna, like, <laughs> kinda, it's, it would. It's now that I'm like, what, eight years older, just looking at me eight years ago. That's that's what I always thought was cool, is that I get to be like- Time captain. Yeah, time yeah you're in a, yeah, 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 yeah. So I get to see, you know, a little 18 year old me. <laughs> Be graceful. Yeah. Be, be graceful, graceful when you watch. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yes, I know, I know. Um, yeah, I just don't watch my own work, but I think because I'm so far away from it now, maybe I can go back and mm. and watch some stuff. Uh, I just never want what I do to 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 sit in what I'm doing next what time. You're doing, yeah. You know, like next time I'm on set, I'm like, but I remember, because okay, big secret. It's not even a secret. My lips stay chat. Okay. That's my that's my <laughs> struggle. That's my struggle on camera. Is I got these. I'm like. I need to find a makeup person and keep this person with me who just knows how to take care of it, right? So for example, if I'm watching myself and I see my chapped lips that, I, that I'm thinking about, <laughs> I'm gonna go on the next set and I'm not even gonna be the character because I'm gonna be like, are my lips chapped? Are my lips yes. chapped? You know, are my lips chapped? <laughs> you know? And when I should not care. Yeah. You know, I should, doesn't matter, the character's lips are chapped. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, that's no, what it is. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? Because um, if I care too much, it's going to take away from the performance. I'll spend more time trying to look pretty on camera mm -hmm. than actually playing the emotions that the character would play, yeah. you know? Um, so unless I'm playing a model, mm -hmm. my lips can be chapped. But if I'm playing a model, though, I'm going to have to fix it. I'm going to I'm gonna have to fix it. You got everybody in here wondering if they chip, they, <laughs> their lips are chapped. <laughs> <They're gonna be laughs> It's the LL Cool J shit I be doing. Hey, it's just the lick in the lip. Oh, everywhere I go, what's up, man? Everywhere I go, it just dries it all up. Can't win. I can't oh, win. Oh, man. Darrell, man, this has been <laughs> such a fun, insightful, light, but in-depth uh, conversation. And uh, we appreciate you coming by. You got to come back. 100%. Come back 27, 28, 29. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yeah. We appreciate down, it, bro. brother. Thank you guys, this was my first time doing something like intimate interview like this, so thank you guys for being here and being part of this. Thank you guys. <laughs>